welcome everyone in the previous two lectures we were discussing about inbreeding outbreeding and the different types of outbreeding here on the board i brought the diagrammatic representation so that we can understand it with the help of pictures even more easily and in a better manner right so we'll look at the diagrammatic representation then we'll get into the topic so we know that animal breeding is a very important aspect in animal husbandry so breeding means mating between two individuals right again we divided uh, animal breeding into two types inbreeding and outbreeding so what is inbreeding inbreeding we told it is breeding within the same breed breeding within the same breed sahiwal cow with another sahiwal cow right so or sindhi variety with another sindhi variety so within the same breed if you do that is inbreeding this is the picture of inbreeding means both belong to the same breed what do you mean by breed breed means it's a group of individuals so which have similar morphological representation appearance size structure behavior configuration everything is the same right so then we call that group of organisms as breed so inbreeding includes mating between the individuals between the female and the male of the same breed is called as inbreeding now what are the advantages of inbreeding we discussed inbreeding increases homozygosity so since at every level we are doing selection we are eliminating the harmful resistance of genes so then the superior genes are getting expressed pure lines are maintained right so then mating is also easy because we are doing within the same breed but the only disadvantage of inbreeding is when we repeatedly do inbreeding it might lead to inbreeding depression the vitality decreases the vigor decreases the productivity decreases the yield and growth rate decreases so this is coming under inbreeding depression so we took an example if we are eating the same breakfast every time if we are eating the same breakfast so then it becomes monotony in the same manner when we are doing breeding between the same breed again 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 so it leads to inbreeding depression to overcome inbreeding depression we told so we need to go for outcrossing what is outcrossing we'll understand i think with this picture with the same varieties we understood what is inbreeding it is breeding between the same breed mating within the same breed and for for how many generations for four to six generations to ensure pure line to ensure homozygosity to increase the superior characters to eliminate the recessive characters right children this is inbreeding now coming to outcrossing so we know that inbreeding opposite is outbreeding outbreeding is of three types the first type of outbreeding is called as outcrossing the second type of outbreeding is called as cross breeding and the third type of outbreeding is called as inter specific hybrid organization there are three types of out breeding the first type of out breeding is called out crossing so did you notice one thing here so i took the same female and male the same breed i took then you can ask me madam what is the difference of out crossing from in breeding since here also they belong to the same breed male and female and here also the male and female belong to the same breed now what is the difference is here the male and female belong to the same breed and they are close relative to each other they they are close relative to each other means their ancestrals are the same they are having common descendants for the four to six generations whereas here of course we are doing between the same breed male and female belong to the same breed but they don't have common ancestors they don't have common ancestors means they are not closely related they are they are far from each other right they don't have common ancestors but belong to the same breed then that is called as outcrossing that is called as outcrossing and we told so repeatedly 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 when you are doing inbreeding when we are doing inbreeding it leads to inbreeding depression the vitality vigor growth rate yield productivity decreases then a single outcrossing a single outcrossing will bring back that vitality vigor it removes inbreeding depression this is outcrossing now if you want to remove that inbreeding depression we need to take that individual which is about to lose the vitality vigor and all so bring that individual and mate it with an another breed sorry mate it with an other one belonging to the same breed but it's not closely related 
it's not close related but it should be of the same breed when we do it it comes under outcrossing understood children in outcrossing we do mating between the individuals of the same breed but they are not relatives they are not uh, having common ancestors then it is called outcrossing coming to cross breeding cross breeding here we'll take two different breeds only the picture itself is telling you that this is a separate breed and this is a separate breed so breeds are different means in morphology in configuration shape size structure they are different from each other so this is one variety of cow and this is another variety means the breed is different here the breed is different and here the breed is different we can make it out now if we do <coughs> excuse me if we do breeding between two different breeds completely different breeds then that is called as cross breeding that is called as cross breeding understood children so i took the same picture to discriminate in breeding from out crossing and cross breeding but in ncrt for cross breeding they mentioned with the example of sheep they are telling one sheep is there which is called merino ram ram means it is male merino ram they have taken and they mated merino ram with bikineri eve this bikineri eve is female the bikineri eve is female so when they mated one breed which is merino ram with an another breed bikineri eve so two different breeds when they have mated they got a new breed the name of the new breed is hesardale the name of the new breed is called hisardale so certainly this hisardale will have the superior characters of bikineri uh, eve and merino ram right children this comes under cross breeding cross breeding involves breeding or mating between two different breeds between two different breeds a popular example is bikineri eve crossing with merino ram produced hisardale right children the third type of outbreeding is inter specific hybrid Hybridization inter means two, specific means species. Between two species, if we are doing hybridization, mating or breeding, it comes under inter-specific hybridization. Again, what is inter-specific hybridization? Hybridization between two different species. Hybridization between two different species. On the board, you can make out this is a horse, one species. Donkey, another species. Horse and donkey, they are two different species. Between these two different species when we are mating both of them then we get a different variety right so it is called inter specific hybridization now if we see if we are taking a male donkey if the donkey is male md like that you remember if the donkey is male and if the female is horse donkey is male and the female is horse then we get mule then we get mule and if in the other case if we take male horse and female donkey male horse and female donkey is called hinni it's called hinni in ncrt they mentioned about mule only how is mule produced mule is produced when we take male donkey and female horse and they have given the name for a male donkey they have given the name for the female horse and they have given the one which produced after this cross is mule so it the male donkey is called jack the male donkey is called jack and the female horse is called mare jack when it is crossed with mare mule is made in the same manner male horse is called stallion male horse is called stallion stallion when it is fused with jennet stallion when it is fused with female donkey called jennet then hinni is produced then hinni is produced mule and hinni both are sterile mule and hinni both are sterile why are they sterile i told you that the chromosomal arrangement is not proper chromosomal arrangement is not proper if you see donkey is having how many chromosomes donkey is having 62 chromosomes diploid number and horse has 64 chromosomes donkey has 62 chromosomes horse has 64 chromosomes now when they are producing the gametes horse will make a gamete the gamete of the horse will bear 32 chromosomes half of 62 is 32 and this one if the gamete is produced here now it produces 31 chromosomes here it produces 32 chromosomes and here it produces 31 chromosomes till 30 chromosomes so horse chromosome donkey chromosome horse chromosome donkey chromosome they pair with each other this is horse chromosome and this is donkey chromosome horse chromosome and donkey chromosome they pair 
till when they can pair till 30 they can pair whereas coming to the 31st chromosome donkey's 31st chromosome will pair with the 31st chromosome of horse also and the 32nd chromosome of horse then the condition will be like this right then the condition will be like this because uh, we are having two chromosomes here and only one chromosome contributed by, by the donkey then because of this irregular arrangement of chromosomes it cannot produce gametes that's the reason mule and hinny became sterile mule and hinny became sterile right why did they become sterile why did they become sterile because of irregular in the arrangement of chromosomes till 30 chromosomes one donkey's chromosome and one horse chromosome can pair till 30 they will pair when come to the 31st chromosome the 31st chromosome of the donkey will pair with the 31st chromosome of the horse and 32nd chromosome only one chromosome will be there that is why the 32nd chromosome also comes and tags to this the 32nd chromosome of the horse comes and tags to this so this leads to an irregular arrangement this irregular arrangement makes the mule and the hinny sterile okay but then it has having so many commercial uses we discussed right so the mule and hinny they can run like horse they can run like horse and they can carry the load like a donkey so but then from them we cannot get the next generation because they turned sterile right children so we understood with the diagram what is inbreeding what is inbreeding inbreeding means breeding done within the same breed it is done within the same breed right within the same breed and four to six generations they have common ancestors now coming to outbreeding here and here the picture is the same outbreeding also is done within the same breed but they are not closely related to each other outclassing means so it is breeding it is breeding between same breeds but they they are not related to each other but not related to each other here these two are related to each other they have common ancestors here no common ancestors coming to cross breeding cross breeding is breeding between two different types of breeds right so cross breeding is breeding between two types of breeds between two types of breeds so this is one variety of animal and this is the other variety of animal this is one breed and this is another breed when we do crossing we get a new breed that's called cross breeding in ncrt they have mentioned the example of merino eaves and bikineri bikineri eaves and merino rams when we do crossing we get hisardale a new breed this is about cross breeding children the third one is interspecific hybridization where we need to talk about donkey and horse right so then we get mule and hinny so if the male is a donkey then we get mule if the female is a uh, if the female is a donkey then we get hinny right now the next technique what we have to study is controlled breeding under controlled breeding we are going to talk about a technology which is called as moet what is moet multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology so here we will see the picture then we will write the flow chart after erasing the board right so MOET comes under controlled breeding experiment controlled breeding experiment now here you can clearly monitor that this breed is completely different from this breed this breed allied bull it is completely different from the normal female so then usually they don't mate with each other because they don't have any resemblance so when we try to do natural breeding between them it's not possible so then what we do we collect the sperms from the elite bull we collect the sperms from the elite bull and artificial insemination we try to send it into the udder of the female into the womb of the female we try to send the semen we do that right so that is why uh, artificial insemination plays a role in moet what is moet multiple ovulation embryo transfer multiple ovulation embryo transfer so from an elite bull we take the sperms from the elite bull we take the sperms and we inject into the udder of the female selected male selected female when we try to inject it now animals you know they don't have menstrual cycle they have estrus cycle cattle they have estrus cycle now means once in a year or twice in a year they come for breeding now in that period when we collect the sperms and we send it into the udder 
either if they are able to mate we will allow them to mate in natural means if they are, if the female is rejecting the male because they are completely different then we do artificial insemination when we do artificial insemination when we are sending the semen inside when we are sending the semen inside so the female can make only one egg per estro cycle means in that six months span of estro cycle or one year span of estro cycle it can make only one egg that one egg uh, might fuse with the sperm or might not fuse with the sperm also means fertility rate is very low right fertility rate is very low sperms are as many as possible but the female will release only egg per cycle it's not menstrual cycle for every month it's an easter cycle which can range from six months seven months like that so then if fertilization we are telling the fertilization is very less if the fertilization is very less again you have to wait for a span of six more months so that is why what do these people do means when they have selected a female when they have selected a female in this female they give an injection in which they will send the hormone fsh like hormone follicle stimulating hormone like synthetic hormone they will inject into the female follicle stimulating like hormone they'll inject into the female when we inject follicle stimulating like hormone into the female then more follicles will be developed more follicles will produce more eggs now how many eggs will be formed six to eight eggs are formed actually we told only one egg will be formed under normal conditions but when we give follicle stimulating hormone then the selected female will produce six to eight eggs per cycle the female will produce six to eight eggs per cycle now the chances became more right six times the chances became more eight times the chances became more now then the sperms can fuse with the six or eight eggs and fertilization will happen means the chance became more fertility rate became more now if all the six to eight eggs are fertilized with the sperm then zygote is formed embryo is formed now this zygote or embryo in which cell stage means in 8 to 32 cell stage the embryo in 8 to 32 cell stage is non-surgically we will suck the embryo from the super ovulated female in this female 6 to 8 embryos are there 6 to 8 embryos are there which are fertilized in which cell stage we are removing them from the mother <coughs> 8 to 32 cell stage we are removing them from the mother non-surgically means we, we, we are using certain devices to suck them out to take them out and those are introduced into surrogate mothers so all these are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 all these are surrogate mothers we are taking the embryo in 8 to 32 cell stage from the super ovulated mother genetic mother and we will introduce these into these surrogate mothers she is a surrogate mother she is a surrogate mother we will introduce into these surrogate mothers all the eggs we removed all the embryos we removed and we introduced into the surrogate mothers then what happened to the actual mother the actual mother is subjected to another injection the actual mother is used the genetic mother is used for super ovulation only means they have checked our conditions they are good for producing many eggs so they will take all the embryos embryos and they will give it to the surrogate mothers and this actual genetic mother is used for another round of super ovulation what is this technology called as multiple ovulation six to eight times ovulation happened here per cycle multiple ovulation we will do it fertilization chances we will increase it after that we will transfer the embryo in 8 to 32 cell stage the embryos are removed non-surgically in 8 to 32 cell stage and they are given to the surrogate mothers they are given to the surrogate mothers and this genetic mother is used for one more round of multiple ovulation All right children i think we understood now clearly what is inbreeding under outbreeding what is outcrossing what is cross breeding what is interspecific hybridization what is jack mare stallion genet mule Henny, why are they sterile also i explained you it is because of this 32 31 chromosomes mule will have how many chromosomes 32 plus 31 63 chromosomes it will have Henny also will have 63 chromosomes so the last chromosomes you know 
the last chromosomes will be in this manner instead of having two chromosomes there is an irregular arrangement three chromosomes are turning them sterile then we were talking about a controlled breeding experiment which is called as multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology so take a screenshot then we will discuss we will write down the flow chart of MOET Alright, took the screen chart. Now we will talk about MOET in detail. We will see the points on the board. And in the next lecture, we will be discussing about epiculture. Rearing of honeybees is called epiculture. That we will discuss in the next lecture. So any queries, yeah, you are welcome. You can post them in the comment box. Right? As I told you, this is one-stop destination. If we read NCRT in this much detailed manner, not leaving any point of NCRT, so what else we need? We can easily get 360 out of 360, right? After the chapter is finished, we are working out the NCRT exemplar questions also, right children? Now, come on. So, we will talk about We'll talk about control breeding, MOET experiment. Multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology. Multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology. What does it uh, is? What is it? It comes under controlled breeding experiments. What do you mean by controlled breeding experiments? Normal breeding when it is not possible, we will take the semen and we will send it into the udder of the female. That process is called artificial insemination. Controlled breeding experiments can be carried out using artificial insemination. Controlled breeding, right? Experiments are carried. So, if we want to do it, they are carried by which technique? AI. What do you mean by AI? Artificial insemination. Artificial insemination. Now, what do you mean by artificial insemination? Means we are collecting the semen from the female and we are sending through the injection, we are sending into the udder of the female. Collecting the sperm from the male and sending it to the udder is called artificial insemination. So, I told you what shall we do here? We have to collect the semen from the selected male and it is injected into the reproductive tract of the selected female, right? So, collection of semen from where do we collect it from selected male and we introduce right and introducing it into the semen is introduced into the female reproductive tract or the udder right so it is introduced into the female reproductive tract by the breeder right by the person this technique is called as artificial insemination this technique is called as artificial insemination now what is the advantage of this technique so male and female need not be at the same place male can be somewhere far so we can collect the semen and we can store the semen in frozen conditions so the semen will not be uh, inactivated the sperms will not be inactivated so we will collect the semen and we store it in the frozen condition that technique of spore storing the sperm in the liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees centigrade is called cryopreservation will store the sperms and that sample where sperms are stored where they are frozen are brought to the place where female is housed so then we can introduce the breeder will introduce it so male and female need not be in the same place and now the problems with the natural mating also can be avoided so when we are going to do artificial insemination so we can tell that that semen can be used immediately or it can be frozen till the female reaches the estro cycle so we can tell the semen can be introduced 
we can introduce the semen uh, immediately or can be stored right what is the technique children storing the sperm in the frozen state or can be stored in frozen state we are storing it in the frozen state the technique is called cryo preservation what is the name of the technique it is called cryo preservation cryo preservation it is also called lyophilization what is it called l y o lyophilization what is cryo preservation or lyophilization storing any sample in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees centigrade will keep the sample viable for years together thousands of years together it is not dead it is viable only so cryo preservation or lyophilization what is that it is storing the sample we are storing the sample in liquid nitrogen at minus at minus 197 degrees centigrade so when you are storing the sample in liquid nitrogen at minus 197 degrees centigrade the technique is called cryopreservation the sample can be stored years together so we are waiting for the female to get the estrous cycle when the female reaches the estrous cycle then this cryopreservized sperm is injected by artificial insemination right now uh, when, by doing this what we can do artificial insemination helps to overcome the problems related to natural mating right so we can tell artificial insemination can prevent the problems it can prevent the problems related to natural mating in natural mating the female will permit the male only during the estrous cycle and if there is only compatibility between them the female will permit so if it is a completely different uh, species or if it is a completely different breed the female may not permit it but when we are injecting the sperm through injection the female doesn't have any involvement here we are directly sending it inside so artificial insemination helps to overcome the problem related to normal mating in this way we are bringing desirable matings right by using artificial insemination in this way desired matings are done so we have some qualities in the superior male we have some qualities in the superior female both of them normally they don't mate but we have done it we have done artificial insemination and desirable qualities we are getting now this is a technique but then if you are checking with one egg from the female one egg from the female and if you are going with one uh, one sperm or many sperms sperms will be many always we know that sperms are many but this is the male gamete sperms are many but a female in one ovulation in one estrous cycle they will release only one egg so the chances are very low success rate is very low the success rate is very low even with artificial insemination even though we are sending the sperm into the female reproductive tract then also the success rate is very low so to improve the chances of fertilization we are injecting follicle stimulating hormone into the female reproductive system so to increase the chances to increase the chances of fertility right to increase the chances of fertility we are injecting the hormone what is that hormone follicle stimulating hormone like activity we are giving this hormone to the female to the selected female when we give this hormone to the selected female what happens so many follicles will mature at the time from each follicle one egg will be formed like that how many eggs are formed when the female has given the follicle stimulating hormone so we have seen that like uh, eight to six to eight right so how many eggs will be formed six to eight eggs will be formed per female with the help of MOET so means the fertilization chances have increased now those eggs will may will fuse with the sperms the zygotes will be formed the zygote starts embryo development in which cell stage the embryos are removed non-surgically in 8 to 32 cell stage 
in 8 to 32 cell stage the embryos how are they removed non surgically non surgically they are removed from the genetic mother and they are introduced into the surrogate mother they are introduced into the surrogate mother this process of producing many eggs per female is called super ovulation what is the process called when we are injecting follicle stimulating like hormone into the female and the female and the female many follicles are maturing many eggs are being made many embryos are made this process is called super ovulation the chances will increase and we will suck them non surgically and we'll give it to the surrogate mothers the genetic mother is once again available for one more round of super ovulation take a screenshot we will see the significance of moet right so when we have to talk the significance of moet this is the technic children now when we have to talk the significance what is the significance and in which animals we can do multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology means this is demonstrated in cattle in rabbit right in mare in these animals they have demonstrated moet so we can tell moet has been demonstrated it has been demonstrated in animals like in which sort of animals we have done moet in cattle in sheep in rabbit buffalo and mares so we have done it in cattle sheep buffalo mares right so rabbit in these animals they have already checked multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology now this multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology is the best method suitable for herd improvement so this is a best method for what it is the best method for herd improvement what do you mean by herd improvement a group of animals of the same breed is called as herd so we will take a selected female and the selected male the selected female means high milk yielding variety so we are telling we are taking selected female what do you mean by selected female high milk yielding variety high milk yielding variety we will take and then we are telling we will take a selected male also right now what do you mean by selected male selected male high quality meat yielding bull it is selected male means it is it has which quality high quality meat yielding this will give milk this will give meat meat yielding bull so high quality meat means lean meat and less fat meat the meat should be lean and the fat should be less then that is called as high quality now high quality male and high quality female so when we go with moet so when we do multiple ovulation embryo transfer now we get a herd we get a population right we get a population of animals now both all the animals will have high milk yield also the animals will have high milk yielding capacity also high meat giving capacity also meat also will be good meat or milk also will be good so moet is applied to it's the best method to improve the herd development by using this technology i think you understood clearly now what is meant by animal breeding in the next lecture we'll be talking about apiculture if the content is good so like share subscribe to my channel thank you